Welcome to St. Ignatius Chapel. Today we celebrate the Ascension of our Lord. Our celebrant today is Jesuit Father Russell Pollitt. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace and the peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. And welcome as we come together to celebrate the Ascension of the Lord. Here in Southern Africa, the Bishops' Conference has moved that celebration from Thursday to the Sunday after the Thursday. And so we come before the Lord knowing that this Feast of the Ascension gives us responsibility for proclaiming the good news. For the times perhaps we notice we have failed to be witnesses to the good news of Jesus, let's ask for mercy and forgiveness. Lord Jesus, your Son of God and Son of Mary, Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, your Word made flesh and splendor of the Father, Christ have, mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you will come again in glory to judge both the living and the dead. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on and earth, earth peace, peace to people, people of good will. will. We, we praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we, you, we glorify you. We give, give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, Only Begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, You take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For You alone are the Holy One, You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. And let us pray. Gladden us with holy joys, Almighty God, and make us rejoice with devout thanksgiving for the ascension of Christ your Son. He is our exaltation, and where the head has gone before in glory, the body is called to follow in hope. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. The beginning of the Acts of the Apostles. In the first book, O Theophilus, I have dealt with all that Jesus began to do and teach until the day when he was taken up after he had given commandment through the Holy Spirit to the apostles whom he had chosen. To them he presented himself alive after his passion by many proofs, appearing to them during forty days and speaking of the kingdom of God. And while staying with them, he charged them not to depart from Jerusalem but to wait for the promise of the Father, which, he said, you heard from me. For John baptized with water, but before many days you shall be baptized with the Holy Spirit. So when they had come together, they asked him, Lord, will you at this time restore the kingdom to Israel? He said to them, It is not for you to know times or seasons which the Father has fixed by his own authority, but you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. And you shall be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the end of the earth. And when he had said this, as they were looking up on, he was lifted up and a cloud took him out of their sight. 
And while they were gazing into heaven as he went, behold, two men stood by them in white robes and said, Men of Galilee, why do you stand looking into heaven? This Jesus, who was taken up from you into heaven, will come in the same way as you saw him go into heaven. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. God goes up with shouts of joy. The Lord goes up with trumpet blast. God, God goes, goes up with shouts, shouts of joy. The Lord <laughs> goes up with trumpet blast. All peoples, clap your hands. Cry to the God with shouts of joy. For the Lord, the Most High, is awesome, the great King over all the earth. God, God goes, goes up with shouts of joy. The, the Lord, Lord goes, goes up with trumpet blast. <laughs> God goes up with shouts of joy. The Lord goes up with trumpet blast. Sing praise for God, sing praise. Sing praise to our King, sing praise. God, God goes, goes up with shouts of joy. The Lord, Lord goes up with trumpet blast. God is King of all the earth. Sing praise with all your skill. God reigns over the nations. God sits upon his holy throne. God goes up with shouts of joy. The Lord goes up with trumpet blasts. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. Brethren, may the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, give you a spirit of wisdom and of revelation in the knowledge of him, having the eyes of your hearts enlightened, that you may know what is the hope to which he has called you. What are the riches of his glorious inheritance in the saints? And what is the immeasurable greatness of his power in us who believe? According to the working of his great might, which he accomplished in Christ, when he raised him from the dead and made him sit at his right hand in the heavenly places, far above all rule and authority and power and dominion, and above every name that is named not only in this age, but also in that which is to come. And he has put all things under his feet and has made him the head over all things for the church, which is his body, the fullness of him who fills all in all. The word of the Lord. Thanks Thanks be to God. Alleluia. Alleluia, Alleluia. Go and make disciples of all nations, says the Lord. I am with you always to the close of the age. Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, Lord. At that time, Jesus appearing to the eleven said to them, Go into all the world and preach the gospel to the whole creation. He who believes and is baptized will be saved, but he who does not believe will be condemned. And these signs will accompany those who believe. In my name, They will cast out demons. They will speak in new tongues. They will pick up serpents. And if they drink any deadly thing, it will not hurt them. They will lay their hands on the sick, and they will recover. So then the Lord Jesus, after he had spoken to them, was taken up into heaven and sat down at the right hand of God. And they went forth and preached everywhere, while the Lord worked with them and confirmed the message by the signs that attended it. Amen. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. A number of years ago when I was working as a parish priest, a little boy, when 
we asked what the ascension is, said, well, that's easy. It's when Jesus goes home to the Father. When asked often what the ascension is, the most popular response is something like, that's when Jesus returns to God, or that's when Jesus goes to heaven. That's true, but it is only partially true, because the ascension has rich theological meaning. The opening of the book of Acts, which we hear today, solemnly describes what one could say the third stage of world history. The first is that of the people of Israel. The second, the time of the earthly Jesus, Jesus being here among us. And now we enter into the third stage where the church begins to blossom, where the community takes on a new form. Moses spent 40 days in the desert preparing for his mission. Jesus spends 40 days in the desert, we are also told, preparing for his mission. And now, after 40 days celebrating the resurrection, we too are appointed witnesses to the ends of the earth. Jesus will return, but in the meantime, the disciples, us, are asked to continue the work of Jesus. We bring the church into being. We bring Jesus into being by the work that we do. And I want to look at three, phases, three phrases that appear in the scriptures which tell us something about the ascension. They perhaps help us to understand the whole narrative better. And they also debunk some of the skewed theological understandings that sometimes float around. The first one is in that book of Acts. We are told that Jesus is lifted up or he is carried up or he is taken into heaven. We cannot understand this in isolation from a single text. We must look at the whole of Scripture to understand what we are being told. Because in the Old Testament, to be taken up is to be enthroned. And so Jesus is now enthroned as the manifestation of God's kingship over the universe. We also notice that when Jesus is on the cross, John's gospel shows us quite clearly in his narrative that Jesus is enthroned. The cross is not a symbol of torture, but rather the throne of the king of the universe. Jesus doesn't journey, which is an important word in the Gospel of Luke and in the book of Acts, to on high, but rather the action of God enthrones him. It might be best to understand the ascension not as a lifting up of Jesus, but rather as an enthronement. God takes Jesus now back into that divine space, that physical space where God is. And the human Jesus is now in the fullness of God's presence. So how do we understand this? What, what does this mean for us? Humanity, us, because Jesus takes on our form, is now also fully in the presence of God. By Jesus being in his humanity, in God's presence, so too each of us is enabled to live in the presence of God. Notice being baptized, which we hear about as well in our scripture text this morning, means that we live in him by virtue of our baptism. We are in God's presence right now. It's not something to come in the future, but we find ourselves in God's presence now. Often when we pray together, we might say things like, let's take a few moments to put ourselves into God's presence. The ascension teaches us that we can't put ourselves into God's presence, but rather 
we should be saying, let's remind ourselves, become conscious of the fact that we are in God's presence. It's a bit of a play on words, but I think it's significant because it tells us a lot about what we believe, or at least how we understand our relationship with God. The second thing I want to point to in these scriptures is that Jesus is taken into the cloud, we are told. And I think this too must be seen in the context of the whole of the scriptures. Remember, Moses on Sinai in the cloud, the transfiguration, we are told there is a cloud. And these are all moments of intense intimacy with God. Jesus is not simply just taken up into God's presence, but he is drawn into this intense intimacy with God. And so too, we are invited into an intimacy with God. This is unheard of in the history of salvation, that human beings can have an intimacy with God. Go back once again to the Old Testament and you will discover that when Moses goes close to God, he has to cover his face, we are told. And yet the risen Jesus makes it possible for us to enter into an intimacy with God in a way that we did not understand before. Jesus is in God's intimate presence. And the human being, us, we find room in God's presence because Jesus is there and therefore are invited into an intimacy with God. And the third and final word is that word heaven. We like to use the word heaven, that Jesus is taken up into heaven. Heaven is not a place. Heaven is a being or a living in God, living in the fullness of God's presence. Notice in the scriptures, we are told he was taken up into heaven and sat down at the right hand of God. Heaven is not somewhere up in the sky. We draw close to heaven to the extent that we draw close to Jesus himself, that we live in the presence of God, that we enter into an intimacy with God. Heaven is not a physical space, but rather our way of being. It is the presence in which we choose to live and to be. Therefore, the ascension is perhaps for us a profound opportunity for communion with God. It opens up not just the possibility of being in God's presence, but rather a true communion with God. Heaven is not something that we are moving towards that is going to somehow be here in the future. It is our ability to live now in communion with God. Jesus has opened the door for us to be in communion with God right now. And so the ascension is therefore not a separation or an absence or even maybe like a divorce, a returning, a going away, but rather it is a moment for us to realize how and what kind of relationship we are called to live, we're invited to live with God. But if we take this seriously, we also notice we have responsibility. And that responsibility is once again made very clear to us in this gospel text that we hear. Go into all the world and preach the gospel to the whole of creation. Go, go, Jesus says. He's entrusting us with a responsibility of proclaiming the reign of God. So the ascension is not simply Jesus disappearing to a place we hope one day to get to. The ascension is about daily living 
in the presence of God, seeking an ever more deeper communion with God, entering into an intimacy with God. And then it is about going to share that with others, to proclaim the reign of God. It's about the realization that the proclamation of the reign of God's kingdom is now in our hands and is our responsibility. And this is a great privilege which demands much from us. And so, friends, let's pray on this Ascension Day that we would seek to live ever more consciously in the presence of God. Let's pray that the Lord will plant in our hearts that same joy and enthusiasm as those first disciples, so that living from our communion with God, we would really go out and proclaim the good news, take responsibility for the reign of God's kingdom through our words, through our actions, through the way that we choose to be in our world. Because that is what the ascension is all about. So let's now together make a profession of faith as we pray the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Conscious of the fact that we are in God's presence. And God seeks a deeper communion with us. Let's now bring our needs in the form of our prayers before the Lord. For all who are awaiting the gift of the Holy Spirit, that their hearts may be open and their spirits receptive to all the gifts of God. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For the grace of wisdom and knowledge, that our hearts may be enlightened and our hope made firm in God, who has called us to continue the mission of Jesus. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For those who face the future with apprehension and uncertainty, that God will enlighten their path and give them peace. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For all nations and their leaders, that the reign of peace and justice of God's rule may inspire all who lead and govern to recognize the dignity of each person and promote the common good. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For the unmasking of racism, that God will help us recognize the variety of forms which discrimination takes and give us the courage to defeat it. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For your own prayers and intentions. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Lord our God, we are grateful for Jesus, your Son, who came to live among us so that we may live in your presence. We offer you now these, our prayers, knowing that you answer them as you know best, through him who has ascended to you 
and is our risen Lord. Amen. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this bread to offer, fruit of the earth and work of our human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine and work of our human hands. It will become for us our spiritual drink. Let's pray, sisters and brothers, that our sacrifice and the sacrifice and efforts of all our lives may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Creator. May, may the Lord, Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of God's name. For our good and the good of all his holy church. We offer sacrifice now in supplication, O Lord, to honor the wondrous ascension of your Son. Grant, we pray, that through this most holy exchange, we too may rise up to the heavenly realms. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly really right and just. Our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For the Lord Jesus, the King of glory, conqueror of sin and death, ascended today to the highest heavens as the angels gazed in wonder. Mediator between God and humanity, judge of the world and Lord of hosts, he ascended not to distance himself from our lowly state, but that we, his members, might be confident of following where our head and founder has gone before. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exults in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic host sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Holy, 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 holy Lord, Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. This is the seed that comes in the name of the Lord, O Son of the Highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dew fall, that they may become for us the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving you thanks, he broke the bread and gave it to his disciples saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the cup, and once more, giving thanks, he gave the cup to his disciples and said, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the cup of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for all for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the cup of salvation, giving thanks that you've held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by your Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Buti, our Bishop, and all the clergy, and all who minister to your people. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. 
welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with St. Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The Lord Jesus taught us to call God our Father, and so we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil and graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, who set your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let's spend a moment praying for peace in our own hearts, our families, our communities, and indeed our country and our world. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold Jesus, the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sin of the world. How blessed are we who are called to share in the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. The body and blood of Christ bring all of us, our family, our friends, and all people to life everlasting. Amen. Although you cannot receive physical communion with us now, we invite you into a moment of spiritual communion. The great medieval theologian, St. Thomas Aquinas, defines spiritual communion as an ardent desire to receive Jesus in the Holy Sacrament and a loving embrace as though we had already received him. His words are echoed by the great mystic and fellow doctor of the church, St. Teresa of Avila, who wrote, when you do not receive communion and do not attend Mass, you can make a spiritual communion, which is a most beneficial practice. By it, the love of God will be greatly impressed on you. At this moment, we invite you to focus on Christ and your longing for union with Him. Express your desire to feel His grace coursing through you giving you strength and courage, particularly in these difficult times. In your desiring union, you are united with us and to Christ. In this moment, we experience the reality that is already here.
Let us pray. Almighty ever-living God, who allow those on earth to celebrate divine mysteries, grant, we pray, that Christian hope may draw us onward to where our nature is united with you. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. So we wish you a very blessed feast of the Ascension and a wonderful day. The Lord be with you. And with your Bow your heads and pray for God's blessing. May Almighty God bless you, for on this very day His only begotten Son pierced the heights of heavens and unlocked for you the way to ascend to where He is. Amen. Amen. May He grant that as Christ, after His resurrection, was plainly seen by His disciples, so when He comes as judge, He may show Himself mercifully to you for all eternity. Amen. And may you who believe he is seated with the Father in his majesty know with joy the fulfillment of his promise to stay with you until the end of time. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down upon you and remain with you now and forever. Amen. Go now in the peace of Christ. Thanks be to God.